In our final lesson on Chapter 22, Protein Synthesis, we want to consider post-translational processes. Let's first look at a specific example, protein translocation. This occurs when a protein needs to be inserted within the cellular membrane or perhaps exported to the extracellular portion of the cell. These polypeptides often carry a signal peptide. Please note that this peptide is actually a part of the original nascent polypeptide chain. This signal peptide is a short hydrophobic alpha helix which is preceded by a positively charged residue. In this example, our hydrophobic alpha helix is marked by the letters outlined in purple and it is preceded by a blue arginine letter. This is the signal to translocate the protein. The signal is recognized by a specific protein called the signal recognition particle or SRP. In the figure on the lower right, the SRP protein in surface model is highlighted in pink. It has a pocket, highlighted in yellow, of mainly methionine residues, and these methionine residues will readily associate with all of the leucines in our hydrophobic helix through van der Waals forces. There is also a segment of negatively charged RNA, blue in our surface model, and that will interact strongly with that positively charged residue in the signal sequence. So therefore we have a specific signal sequence and a specific protein to recognize it. Once the protein is translocated, the signal is often removed. So this would be an, a specific example of how a, the final polypeptide may not have exactly the same number of amino acids, the same content as specified by the message. Proteins are also modified in other ways. We've learned in previous studies that proteins may be modified by proteolysis. A good example of that is proinsulin, shown on the lower right of the screen. It is called proinsulin because it's the initial polypeptide, but it is cleaved at two spots marked by the black arrows to produce the final insulin hormone. Proteins may also be modified by adding groups to the side chains, such as methyl, acetyl, and propionyl groups. Finally, proteins can be modified by adding carbohydrate groups through glycosylation, by adding lipid anchors or fatty acyl chains as well. So in other words, proteins may vary considerably beyond just the amino acid sequence indicated by the genetic code. That concludes our studies in Chapter 22 and indeed our studies for the entire semester. I hope that now you can see what was referred to in our first lesson as the unity of biochemistry. The study of biochemistry helps us to understand the organizing principles of life in all its diverse forms and therefore biochemistry is ultimately concerned with the wonder of life itself. My very best wishes to you in your future endeavors, both in academics and in your life.